Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for April 23rd. April 23rd is the 113th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 114th in leap years, with 252 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is Fortean. Fortean is an adjective which means relating to paranormal phenomena, as in Fortean phenomena like a spontaneous combustion. This word is named after Charles Hoy Fort, who lived from 1874 to 1932. He was a writer, a researcher of paranormal phenomena. Earliest documented use of the word Fortean, 1920. I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my research are included in the show notes. Ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share this video with others. You can do that with the link in your email, messages, or social media. Be sure and stay to the outtakes and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm recording in front of a big window in the front of the house with the sun coming around. It's indirect light because there's a a porch roof, but every once in a while I'll see something fly up. Little birds, wasps. A while ago there was a, a green anole. I tried to film it for you, but golly, they move so fast. If I get any good video, I'll, uh, I'll share it in the outtakes. Alrighty then, with that, we're going to start in the year 1635 when the first public school in the United States, Boston Latin School, was founded in Boston. This is the birthday of German physicist and academic and Nobel Prize laureate Max Planck, born April 23rd, 1858. He was a real smart guy, figured out a lot of stuff. <laughs> he lived to the age of 89. Now you might remember that I told you the other day that the Chicago Cubs played their first game in Wigman Park, now known as Wrigley Field, on April 20th, 1916. So I was confused when I saw this next item, that the first baseball game played at Wigman Park, now known as Wrigley Field, <laughs> was played on April 23rd, 1914. But it's the difference between the first baseball game and the first Cubs game played there. So hopefully that wasn't more confusing. <laughs> American singer, actress, dancer, and diplomat Shirley Temple was born April 23rd, 1928. What a little cutie she was. I've placed a link in the show notes to one of her performances as a child actress. She lived a good, full, busy life and lived to the age of 85. American fashion designer Halston was born on April 23rd, 1932. He lived to the age of 57. The American actor Lee Majors was born on April 23rd, 1939. He did some work in westerns, but I think he's probably best known for his part as the Six Million Dollar Man. For any of you who are too young to know what that is, the premise behind the $6 million man is that this guy had been nearly killed in an accident, but they saved him with medical intervention and a lot of bionic enhancements, which gave him superhuman abilities and strength. It was a pretty cool show. Still alive, Lee Majors turns 81 in 2020. On April 23, 1945, Adolf Hitler's designated successor, Hermann Goering, sent him a telegram asking permission to go ahead and take over leadership of the Third Reich. Martin Bormann and Joseph Goebbels advised Hitler that this was treasonous, although I don't imagine he needed their input to think that. You know, he's a bit of a hair-trigger, high-tempered fella, but there you go. On April 23, 1967, Soyuz 1, a manned space flight carrying cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov was launched into orbit, and OMG, this is the birthday of American terrorist, Oklahoma City bombing co-perpetrator, Timothy McVeigh, born April 23rd, 1968. He was convicted for this and executed. He was 33 when he was executed. On April 23rd, 1968, student protesters at Columbia University in New York City took over administration buildings 
and shut down the university in protest of the Vietnam War. On April 23, 1985, Coca-Cola changed its formula and released new Coke. The response was overwhelmingly negative. The original formula was back on the market in less than three months. On April 23, 2005, the first ever YouTube video entitled Me at the Zoo was published by a fellow named Jawed Kareem. And I wondered, how in the world did he know? How did he find out? How did he know to upload that video to be the first? And it turns out that he was a co-founder. That would do it. <laughs> that would do it all right. There's a link in the show notes to that also. By the way, remember that that was before iPhones came out. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share. Did I already say that? You can check out my other channel, 8 Susquehanna. There's a link in the show notes to that as well. Have an amazing day. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Signed the Capit. Cap <laughs> it's a mouthful. Did I really just do that whole thing and not record it? <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I think I already said that. <laughs> well, that's not good. <laughs> Thank goodness for editing. We'll start from the beginning. And yeah, we'll probably leave that part out. <laughs> I don't know how all that's going to go together or if it's even going to make it to the video. We'll just see. That's not going to go. Yeah, we're going to cut those out. That'll all be laying on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I'll just do that whole thing over. <laughs> that might not make it into the video. We'll see. Changing it up. <laughs>